Hello, Nanette. I'm in the Vienna um, Modern Art Museum, and it's actually really cool. You know what? I need to make a call. Like, I just, um, you know, it's not London, but you do what you can. Right. Well, let's see here. So, um, anyhow, it costs 30 cents. I don't even have my wallet on me, so that's not going to happen, but I found me for these guys. So, that's awesome. My third day in Vienna and I'm in this like really cool place I just thought I would show you because pictures are not doing it justice I just came out of that little tunnel and then you just like look around and there's like these crazy -ness. my camera phone cannot make a, a panoramic but that's basically what you need to do look at the horses yeah I don't even know what this building is cuz I'm not paying attention to the tour okay see you later Hello Internet, we're at the Belvedere and it's raining. Here's our tour guide. Stay here, everybody. you want to walk around the other side? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. It might really pour some more. Listen, I would say here you have it. Yeah, the view is from the other side, though. But you'll see it a little bit from the bus when we go down the when we go down the bus. This is so much fun. It's raining, but it's sunny. What is going on? <laughs> this really magnificent Belvedere. And what a just museum. And with the Texas group, we're coming back. So we will be on the other side. The engineer group, uh, you just have to come back. Yeah, take the D Street car and come back and look at us from the other side. Uh, Klimt is in there. Gustav Klimt, the kids, expressionism, all those things are in there. It is Really, a famous museum in here and in the Leopold. And in the Leopold, I see a spot of sun. Let's go and chase it. What film? If you know what film it is, put it in the comments box because I doubt any of y'all know that one. I'm just kidding, I have total faith in you guys. I'm sure you know exactly what movie I'm talking about. And it's not Disney, I'll give you that hint. Alright, we're going back to the bus now, even though it's raining less now than when we got off the bus. So, uh, this is part of the Stadtbahn that was built by Otto Wagner, a friend of Gustav Klimt's. This is Art Nouveau. This is already modern. Yeah, this is modern. Uh, over on the left, you see the Kunstlerhaus, which was where the conservative artists um, uh, exhibited, and the sort of salmon-colored beige building that looks like a temple here to our immediate left. Uh, that is the Musikverein, where you can take advantage of marvelous concerts every night. There are recitals, concerts, and everything there. Uh, the sort of hidden building on the right here is the Wien Museum. That's a museum that has to do with the city of Vienna and begins with the Romans. The Romans were here about the time of Christ's birth, something that perhaps not all of you know. And uh, the uh, Wien Museum will take you on three floors, will take you from the time of the Romans all the way up to modern Vienna uh, in very, very interesting exhibits. It's one museum that perhaps you should uh, sort of go to visit just to get to know Vienna a little bit. Straight ahead, out of the front window, is the um, uh, concert house. Yeah, I can think of it in a second. Uh, concert house. That is our second big concert hall here in Vienna. Uh, again, uh, you cannot be bored in Vienna. There is no way. There are operas. Uh, there are concerts in these two big concert halls. There are all kinds of recitals. Uh, there is more than one concert hall. There are musicals going on, jazz bars, all kinds of stuff. There's no staying at home being bored in Vienna. That uh, just doesn't exist here. Uh, now here, and I see the drops falling on the big front window. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, I don't know. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Let's just wait. Let's just wait. Shall I say maybe it will blow over? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure. It doesn't really look like it, does it? But let's, uh, let's just wait. Now, uh, here we're on the Schwarzenbergplatz. And the Schwarzenbergplatz uh, is a kind of, as you can see, a lot of traffic here, a lot of streetcars, uh, subways uh, that, uh, that are also underground and all kinds of stuff here. 
and the Schwarzenberg, uh oh, here it comes, yeah, here it comes, yeah, I knew it would hit, yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, had we started an hour <laughs> earlier, we would have made it, yeah. The, uh, the Schwarzenberg. Of the bushes uh, that are growing oh, up out of his, uh, yeah. out of his window. And his basic idea. Hey, let's go, let's go over here. Our tour guide is uh, leaving. Uh, let's go over here. Uh, there, there are just too many people crowding around here. I'll give you time to take pictures, yeah? Uh, just listen a little bit to what uh, what we have here. Uh, Hunded Busse claimed that the worst thing about architecture is that when you build a house or any kind of building, you have to destroy a piece of nature. You have to dig up the trees, you have to dig up the bushes, you have to, uh, you know, the flowers, the grass, everything has to go. And so he figures, okay, uh, let's kind of compensate for this and put all of that stuff on the roof. Yeah, if you, uh, if you plant all of the trees, bushes, flowers, plants, everything up there, then really you haven't destroyed uh, anything when you build your, your, your structures. So that we have these green tenants of his, these enormous trees uh, that are growing up uh, off the roof. And he claims that all windows can be different sizes that the architecture should be colorful, uh, that uh, it should be irregular, there should be no straight lines. Uh, he uh, claimed that straight lines are evil, yeah? that uh, in nature there are no straight lines, and uh, therefore uh, likes this irregularity, this organic feeling. And he also claimed that everybody should have the right to lean out of their window with a brush and as far as they can reach to sort of paint around their window. Just to mm. make it theirs, yeah? Just to make it uh, personal. And you can see not everyone did that, yeah? But a uh, few people in day, they did sort of slop around, uh, slop around their, uh, their windows a little bit. Uh, the floors, now, I don't know whether you saw, there was a lady who just fell. Did you notice the lady who fell? Was it you? No. No, it was a lady who just uh, just uh, fell down. And I did have one young woman in one of my classes who very seriously sprained her ankle here. You can see that as far as the pavement is concerned, Hundert Wasser takes whatever he finds. He takes bricks, he takes small cobblestones, big cobblestones, Everything all mixed together, lumpy, bumpy, irregular, and uh, therefore uh, the people inside, because the pavement inside is also like that. Ooh. So that it means you have trouble keeping your washing machine uh, stand straight, you have trouble uh, keeping uh, your table, yeah, everything's kind of a little bit wobbly in there because everything is irregular, everything is movement, everything is. Uh, is sort of organic. He liked this organic feeling. And he uh, especially loved water. Uh, let's go a few steps and look at his, look at his fountain. Uh, his name? Uh, that he even used little pieces of tombstones. Yeah, these are tombstones. With people's name on it, yeah? Uh, what is it? Everything uh, from the turn of the century, even the Roman brick that he managed to find and stuff in there. He just used uh, that. Yeah, everything. Mm -hmm. This is all kinds of things that this is the tile of the tile being created and fired uh, himself. And he would be very, very unhappy when these tiles came out of nice and square and perfect. He is known to have taken strains of tiles to smash them down on the ground so that they break. Yeah, he liked the broken ones better. Yeah, he liked the ones where he could, uh, where he could put some different patterns and uh, different ideas uh, uh, in there. In other words, movement, nature, he was green. He was really There's green. a snake in there. For the green nature. Now let's go here. You know, we're not lobbying. Yeah, the people who live here guarded, it. It's locked. But uh, 
but uh, let we can peer in, we can look in. We're gonna, it's not like you stop gonna to peep that. inside of these apartments now. Bye. <laughs> Here it is from an even better view. I don't really have a good position here. Film sometimes doesn't get preference apparently to all these cameras. That is really pretty. I like it. And we just found out that living there does not cost any more than living in any other public housing except for the bribe money that you have to give people to get you on the public housing list. And it does mean a bit of seepage. You have know, water seepage in the top floors there uh, because you have to water. There are tons and tons of earth up there on the ceiling or on the, on the roof. There. So this is really, I would almost say, world famous Hundred Vasa House. Uh, there is nothing like it in the world except if any of you have been in Barcelona. Uh, the Gaudi architecture is a little bit similar. Uh, I don't know whether Hundred Vasa actually had, I, I'm sure he had a Hundred Vasa. Out all the way across the uh, western part of Vienna, uh, 19th, 18th, 17th, We're in the Viennese woods. Uh, half of Vienna woods is sort of uh, on the edge, and it's kind of interesting that the housing in these Dude, districts the that uh, border on the Vienna woods is more expensive. The rent is more expensive. Uh, the houses are more expensive uh, because they claim that the fresh air Hello Internet. I have ventured into another space place um, of amazingness. I'm in Stide Park, um, kind of in the center of Vienna, or as they might say, Wien. Um, for Vienna and I'm just enjoying nature and I spent probably like five hours today inside of a Starbucks and that was really awesome I met a Canadian actually who speaks impeccable German um, but when she started speaking English with me then I was like you do not have a German accent whatsoever so out with it and she's like oh well I'm from Vancouver and I was like oh there you have it. It makes sense. Um, that guy just gave me the death stare. You would not believe. Hello internet. I am at a really pretty garden and it's just gorgeous. Look at this. It's just like so awesome. And it's got like these little lakes and ducks everywhere. And then there's like benches and flowers. And like, oh my god, it's some flowers. Look. English roses. Those are English roses. How great. This is so awesome. Okay, well, so I went down to the information and I was like, so what's going on in the lounge and can I like go in there and see what's up and is it available to anyone and the woman who I asked was like oh yeah yeah go up to the lounge and and just like sit there and listen and I was like okay so I like went up there I got some free food they were like giving away pretzels which is like the first salty food that I've had in Europe because one time when I, I on the actually on the plane over I was like hey do you have anything like salty to snack on and the uh, stewardess was like Oh yeah, come to the back with me. And I went in there with her and it was like chips and it was like salt and uh, it was like salt and cheddar chips or whatever and they had no salt on them. So it's like some things here are just not very salted. And so, but these pretzels, they were like really salted. And so I was kind of happy, but then it made me thirsty. So then I drank this bubbly water and that was awesome. And then they had coffee. Uh, which the coffee was super super strong. It's like some of the first like drip coffee that I've had here in Europe Because most everything is espresso based, but they did have that but it was so strong. I felt like I was drinking um, like double strength 
uh, coffee, but yeah, kind of like as if, yeah, double strength coffee, it, but it was good, it was just like really strong, and it was like really acidic, because it had been sitting there for a while, but it was necessary, I was a big grump t this morning before having that coffee. Uh, hello! <laughs> well, say bye! Bye! <laughs> bye.